Welcome to my channel. This is another episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I have to thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for subscribing. And thank you for the comments. I really enjoy interacting with you in the comments. I'm so thankful for the growth of my channel and for the interest that you show in me. So thank you again. I'm going to talk about some news items and then uh, I got a couple of things I want to show you. Um, <clears throat> the first item today is an esteemed molecular biologist has warned of a smoking gun evidence that COVID-19 was engineered by researchers at the Chinese lab. Now, those of us who use common sense have always been aware of this, but it's now leaking into the mainstream scientific community and it's getting to the point where they're no longer going to be able to deny it. When you couple that with the news I gave you the other day that the U.S. has again started funding gain-of-function gain research at the Wuhan lab, it's just insane. We need, we need to put a stop to it. Congress needs to pass a law preventing uh, any gain of function research at all with viruses period just stop okay um you may not be aware of this but missouri has sued um, some of the high-tech companies like facebook and and the government for censorship and the government is fighting back. The, the uh, state of Missouri won in the uh, trial court and won in the appeal court, and now it's before the Supreme Court. And this particular thing that I want to tell you about is an amicus curiae brief that, that's Latin for friend of the court that uh, a fellow filed. <coughs> I have read the entire brief, and... It, it lays out in copious detail how the government censors speech that it doesn't agree with. And basically what they're doing is they're, they're using third parties like universities and research organizations and those types of outfits, which they are funding to get around the law that says they're not allowed to suppress our speech. So I expect that the Supreme Court will probably rule against them. The DOG has made, DOJ has made some ridiculous arguments in this case. And I'll give you the links to the, uh, both to the Substack article, which you may or may not be able to read. Well, no, actually, I only give you the link to, the, to download the, the brief. Uh, but you can search on the Internet for Supreme Court amici brief in Missouri censorship case and you'll be able to find this. Oh, I'm sorry, I do I do provide it for you in a separate link. Uh, it's an article by an Adam uh, Kadub, C-A-N-D-E-U-B, uh, entitled, The U.S. Government and Stanford Pioneered the Censorship Scheme that Europe May Impose on Us. It's an interesting read if you can get to it. It's on Substack, so I don't know if you can view those or not. I can view them because I'm a subscriber. Um, in other news today, and this I want to show you. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is rather discouraging in my opinion. Let's see. No, that's not what I want to do. This is what I want to do. Um... This is the Index of Economic Freedom for 2024. And this was just released. And if you look at it, you can see that the greatest uh, country in the world for economic freedom in the rankings is Singapore. The second greatest is Switzerland. Then comes Finland. Then comes Taiwan, Luxembourg, New Zealand. Estonia, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, the Netherlands, Finland, 
Australia, South Korea, Lithuania, Canada, Cyprus, Germany, the Maraturis, Latvia, Chile, the United Arab Emirates, Iceland, Czech Republic, and coming in in 25th place for economic freedom now is the United States. We have sunk to sad lows in this country. We really have. Oh. Uh, then there's another article that I want to show you. It's called The Backlash in Deep Blue America. And this is an interesting article about what's going on. You know, you may be wondering, for example, when you see uh, people running loose, rioting in Portland, and nothing is done about it, and you see the, the uh, uh, people defecating on the streets and shooting up on the streets in San Francisco. When is enough is enough for these people out here? Well, it looks like uh, the tide may be turning in those places. I'm going to read you these uh, four bullet points. In progressive San Francisco, voters frustrated by the twin crises of homelessness and overdose deaths are poised to back a series of law and order ballot proposals. Notably, the city's Democratic mayor, London Breed, supports the measures. That is notable. In Oregon, the state legislature has just recriminalized drug position, possession after a two-year experiment in decriminalization that led to a massive spike in overdose deaths. In deep blue Washington, D.C., council members face recall efforts amid rising violent crime. And in New York last week, Eric Adams called for a major overhaul of the city's sanctuary city status. So, as much as the media has ridiculed our governor for shipping people to the sanctuary cities, it seems to be having the desired effect. It has slapped them in the face with reality, the reality that we live with every day here in Texas, where ranchers are overrun and cities are overrun with so many people they cannot possibly take care of them, and it drains their budgets. And now it's starting to hurt New York and Chicago and some of these other sanctuary city places. And the people are getting upset because they don't like it. They don't like having their money spent on illegal aliens instead of on American citizens. So that'll be interesting to follow up on. And finally, in this news that just came out this morning, the Supreme Court ruled 9-0 to zero in favor of Trump remaining on the ballot. So, as you may be aware, Colorado kicked him off the ballot, the Colorado Supreme Court. The main Secretary of State kicked him off the ballot, and a single judge in Illinois, in Cook County, kicked him off the ballot. Well, he's back on the ballot, and that's a good thing because tomorrow is Super Tuesday when people vote in all those states. So. Uh, this is a win for the Constitutional Republic. I'm not going to say democracy because we're not a democracy. It's a win for the Constitutional Republic that we created, that our forefathers created, and that has served us so well for so long. So those are the news items for the day. I hope you appreciate this. I do a, a lot of work to put all this together for you, and I'm Generally, I'm trying to find things that you may not be aware of because they don't hit the mainstream media, which uh, <laughs> is just about anything of consequence. So, as you, my followers, know, I pray for you. I pray that you'll have an abundant life, but I also pray that you'll be healthy. And I'm focusing my prayers now on your health, both mental and physical. I pray that God will cure whatever is wrong with you, that he'll heal you, and that you will be whole again. I pray that if you are fighting a disease or some sort of a problem with your body, that God will overcome it miraculously. 
and take you into a much better place. And if the problems that you're dealing with are mental, if they're in your psyche, I pray that God will heal you there as well and that you will be whole again and that you'll be able to enjoy life the way that I enjoy it. So I pray for that for each of you. And I pray that you'll have a lengthy life and that God will keep you safe from harm throughout. I pray he'll do the same for every person that you love. And I also pray that you'll be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will make your request known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet out.